welcome to Bethan's Kitchen and Garden. Today I'm going to do a plot tour. It's very, very windy outside, so I might have to uh, resort to a voiceover if um, the audio is not very good. But let's go outside and have a look around. I've been on holiday for a week and I'm, I'm just in the process of tidying it all up now. So uh, hopefully it won't be in too bad a state and I can talk you through what's occurred while I've been away. So we start off with the sweet corn and bean bed that's by the conservatory. These beans are struggling a lot in this bed. They have no, hardly any of them have any leaves. They're still producing beans, mine, to give them the fair, you know, assessment of the situation. But I'm not entirely sure what is eating them. But uh, this one's not doing too bad and there are some beans there. These are probably ready for harvesting now. Um, so that's that bed anyway. So the sweet corn is starting to get cobs, which is great. And if I just show you this, this pot is for Digwell Greenfingers' single seed potato challenge. Um, which is my one remaining potato uh, plant. So that's not doing too well. But in here, I sowed two pots of Eskimo carrots. These were pelleted as well. They sort of had a blue coated on them, which made it easier to, um, to see when you're planting them or sowing them rather. And um, there's not a bad germination on them. So when the weather gets a bit colder, these will go into one of the greenhouses, I expect, and they can grow on in there through the winter and hopefully give us a bit of a crop around January, February time. Here's the parsnips and carrots and leek bed. This variety is early nance and there's a couple of good looking carrots there. Their uh, heads are poking out and the leeks, I grew them as baby leeks so they are probably about ready to come out now as well. And if I we just have a little look through this foliage, it doesn't tell us much about what's going on with the parsnips underneath. However, um, the, there is something there. So there is something growing under there, if you can see that bit of white. And the stems look quite thick, so hopefully they won't have all tapered underneath. My ochre in pots are not going very great, but then I did plant them out late. This one is probably the best one, really. Or maybe this one. But they're still in the early growth season. My parsnips I've interplanted with leeks in places where I was missing parsnips. So uh, we'll see how those leeks turn out. And these carrots are Amsterdam forcing. And they're not too bad. There is some sort of green there, up orange there. So that will be good. And there's one there. Oh! Poking his head up. And that's a very strong leak there. So my, some of these leaks are ready for pulling and some of the carrots are ready for pulling. But if we come around now, onto the main beds as it were, my courgettes have started to produce. I had a harvest from here when I came back. I had a fairly biggish courgette, of course, as you do. And the other courgette plant is also producing now. If I come round to the French beans. The blotty French blotty beans rather, not French beans. They are doing really well. 
there's quite a lot on that one and quite a bit coming on all of them really so I'm pleased with how they are going my sugar snap peas this side is not doing very well at all this side is doing better I did do a small harvest of them the other day um, let me come this way I did do a small harvest of them the other day but um, I'm going to leave the rest now to save seed for next year they were very nice they were lovely and sweet they were uh, yes sugar snaps so that was good and if you down on the floor there there's a couple of squashes that are beginning to set I've got three squash plants here two um, rouge fifty tom and one hundred weight and if I come round to the sweet corn there's some good cobs there some very good cobs there and underneath here my I did a massive harvest of these french beans the other day uh, and more have grown since so these french beans are doing really really well and anything to show you around here the Jerusalem artichokes are doing well they've gone quite tall now but no sign of any flowers yet my runner beans have gone bonkers they have got little beans on them now and they're probably further down there are some bigger ones but um we'll pick them soon now my kale my kale is this kale is doing really well i um i'm checking see there's i noticed some cabbage whites around and um they've laid eggs there so squash them off uh, but I'm very happy with how this kale is going and I got another batch of kale over there and I'll talk about that when I get there but uh, I need to cover all this over because it was covered with bird netting and the butterflies are getting into it so I've just taken the netting off at the moment before I put the other netting on but these cabbages are doing well too so I just want to check all of them before I put the netting back on to make sure there's no eggs being laid on them the celeriac is doing really well the only reason this is um, covered in netting is because I had nowhere really to put the net in and the celeriac is bulbing up under there now so hopefully we'll have a decent size celeriac over the winter so that's good I just need to fix this net in and then we'll have another cloth my was here my perpetual spinach and uh multicolored swiss chard hasn't done very well it had all bolted when i came back apart from these three plants so everything got taken out and i'll maybe i'll plant spinach or something here for the winter and then there's a couple of fruit coming on these squashes here I think that's from the other plant across the way which is a Yuchiki Kuri this one is like a, a sugar a sugar prince something like that I'm missing missing a plant from here that got lost well you know it died off rotted away and then my butternut squash there are a couple set in on there and I just need to keep an eye on this squash plant because there's some more there and up the stem I just need to make sure that I train it 
to, to run across this way really because that's the idea of this frame is the whole frame was going to be covered in squashes and then if I come to this Siberian Borokale um, it's not that too bad but we haven't had a harvest off it yet but to me it looks like there's quite a lot of stem there and then not that much leaf so I think I'm gonna opt for sowing the other kale that I showed you just now in future I mean I don't really need this much kale to be honest so what I might do is harvest what's here see if we like it and um, uh, pull it out if I don't like it similarly over here I can just get my shadow out of shot loads of beans for harvesting here loads of beans I haven't done a harvest over here yet since I've come back so they're doing really well this is sprint something sprint this variety as I'm sure um, and, and it's been really good really successful for me this year and then I got some Turks turban squashes growing there and there is a cucumber market more cucumber plant in the middle which I do need to tie in just wrap that one there and I do believe there's a cucumber somewhere so that is starting to produce and that's ready now because they don't grow much bigger than that Erica's potato challenge uh, as you can see they are growing which is great and so are my Desiree ones but again as we'll see what it's looking like when we do the harvest and now my sad news my brassicas have got absolutely demolished by um, caterpillars those you can see that one flying around there that white um, butterfly has laid loads of eggs and I've spent some of this morning pulling out a load of leaves and pulling out a load of plants which my chickens have been very happy about so what was here was broccoli which I've taken away because it had all bolted I've left the nasturtiums in place for the time being because I like the leaves and if I can find some to show you somewhere there we go right here those will be the seeds for next year so I can harvest some of these seeds once they've uh, grown a bit more so I want to leave these in for a little bit more and you can also pickle these and they're a bit like capers but spicy capers I like capers if you don't like capers then obviously don't do that I've got one cauliflower if I move over I can shade it then yeah I got one cauliflower that is coming out today because um, I don't think that's going to grow much more and it's just going to be eaten by the caterpillars if I leave it in there was more uh, cauliflower there but they didn't come to anything and neither did the cabbages they just got eaten alive but I did end up with three kohlrabi um, I did have six and the other three ended up with a big split in them so I don't know what has caused that but um, whatever it is I don't fancy eating them so the chickens will have them and then these Romanesco cauliflowers these show no sign of heartening up so these might just come out anyway because I am just thinking of stripping this entire bed and putting in pak choy and more cauliflowers to grow over the winter the only thing there is up here is 
the purple sprouting broccoli. This is purple sprouting broccoli and I'm not sure whether to keep that in or get rid of that. My peas that were growing here, they've all gone so that's another space to put something in. I've got loads of seeds I need to sow. And down here, these leeks have done really well but the atomic carrots that were here have not done well at all. There's hardly anything, they've all rotted off and there's, there we are. That's, um, that's as well as they grew. So this bed, there's one here. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. We can have a feed from that. I'll take that in the house. But I'm going to clear all of these, including the leeks today. And that, that will be another space to put either lettuces or pak choy or whatever I'm going to grow for the winter. That can go in there. So it's time to you know, be plant stuff. My flower bed has been absolutely trashed with the wind. The dahlias are everywhere. There's a sunflower growing there. So the sunflower challenge lives on. <laughs> um, I got given this net in yesterday, which is really handy. And I think it will be thin enough against uh, cabbage whites so this is the reason this is out at the moment is because I need to cut it to um, to put it over there and over there as well um, although I will be taking all of them out um, but we'll see and here are my rows of potatoes I, um, I have yet to do a potato reveal. I haven't taken any potatoes so far this year, but if you have a little quick preview, you can see there's a little potato there. So there will be a potato reveal coming in the very near future. That's lovely weed. I'm very good at growing weeds. And over here, similarly, my sprouts are looking a bit better than the uh, other brassica cage but I need to get in and amongst this and take away all the dead leaves off the bottom and then I'll hopefully cover it with some of that finer mesh that I've got and happy days the sprouts will live to give us some sprouts and the leeks are also looking really good I think I could probably take the cover off here now oh that's better the sun's gone in that's great the um yes i can probably take the cover off you know the the reason the cover is on is to stop my cats from piddling in there um so we'll see about that we're in the front garden now and my lemon balm is doing really well And my lemongrass, similarly, is doing really well. It's kind of the display I was hoping for. I've done absolutely nothing with my tea leaf plants here. Um, so I might try and harvest them soon. And uh, maybe make some tea out of them. My tomatoes. These are doing well. No sign of the dreaded bee word yet. Um, however, I know it is in the area. But these are doing okay so far, apart from the terrible wind today. And my turnips, they're not looking too good. But I do have asparagus peas here. So I do need to harvest these. Um, I haven't had a great return off them to be honest but I've never grown them before so it's worth a try and we'll see what they taste like if we like them I'll grow them again and then the rest of this bed is empty all my lettuces that were down here went to seed so I've taken them out ready for sowing some winter things in 
and my gherkins, four gherkin plants I put in here and only one is surviving and it's producing a little gherkin so for some reason, I don't know why the others all rotted off but that one is doing well and then my beetroot my beetroot is a good tail there is lots of beetroot here for harvesting I can just get into the middle there we are loads loads and loads and loads of beetroot I'm gonna to have to harvest because there's beetroot here as well there's loads in here there's a big this might be too big but there's a big one there so I need to do a real big harvest on this beetroot and then um, pickle it I suppose and then my fruit bushes and rhubarb well that's kind of done now I've got a few gooseberries left in the back to harvest uh, that I didn't get around to doing before I went on holiday and the only sort of thing left uh, edible wise are these grapes which I've really appreciated the cutting I did on them where I trimmed all the foliage back however this one let's have a look yeah there might be some potential there I suppose yeah these are definitely growing bigger than when I cut them so that uh, that did work so I'm pleased about that hopefully we'll have some grapes off here this year and then the other um, the sunflowers I planted here are doing well this one and the chocolate cherry is doing well and these tomatoes if they don't fall over I have staked them once but the wind is just atrocious today so um, I have to do a repair job there tomorrow and along here there's um harvested which isn't bad really not bad at all so there's a fair few on this in this uh, planter here now one of these one of these tomatoes had a bit of a dubious ah there we are look that tomato that looks a bit dubious to me I'm not sure if that is blight or not but the rest of the plant looks all right so it might just be how that plant grows ha, hoping 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 fingers crossed and got a big tomato coming on these bush variety ones and again the tumbling toms I've got a fair few tomatoes ready for harvesting now and these ones are doing well too my strawberries have all had it now they've uh, stopped producing but I've still got some blueberries got a few blueberries to harvest on here so Anwen will be happy because she likes blueberries and the raspberries are now beginning to come be beginning to come good. So there we are. And finally at the top of the drive I had a good harvest of beans from here the other day even though they are looking a bit sorry for themselves at the moment they have produced a fairly goodish crop so far hopefully there's more to come 
Although I'm not seeing any on here anywhere. Apart from the small one there. And then finally over here are my carrot tubs. And I think they're probably ready for harvesting now. So we'll have a harvest of them soon as well. Well, that's it from me for today. I hope you enjoyed having a look around my garden. There are lots of good points and lots of, you know, bad points. Uh, the cabbages, I better go and um, net them before those whites do any more damage on them. Uh, but there we are, lesson learned. Next year, they'll have to be a really proper um, butterfly-proof cage, I guess. So that's something to be getting on with in the winter. Right, that's it from me for today. Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing and commenting if you have done so. I really do appreciate it. And uh, take care, everybody. And all I can say about the plot tour today is... Lovely job!